Actually, okay, do you have to pay for this? You need to buy it. Oh. Yeah, so I thought they gave it for free. If you are under the B40 group, so oh. the government has allocated like, I think one or two million decoders for free. Oh. So you can check online and if you're eligible, you can just uh, get it for free. Okay. Oh, uh, by the way, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. And as you can see in this episode, we're going to go in depth on digital TV. So what is digital TV? Obviously, uh, a lot of people can get confused um, whether uh, a flat panel TV is digital TV, whether digital TV, whether that digital TV is a paid service, whether they have to pay for this, um, what is my TV, uh, and why is there a need for us to transition from analog signal to digital broadcasting signal. So today with me, obviously, I have uh, my partner in crime, Alex, and he's been uh, working on uh, stories about digital TV uh, in depth since uh, early this year and also uh, uh, last year. So the government has started talks about converting analog broadcast to digital broadcast for a few years already. Uh, it's only happening this year. So Alex, can you fill us in on why is it important for us to move from analog signal to digital signal? Okay, so I'll start off from the consumer point of view first. So okay. firstly, digital TV offers better image quality. So, you know, analog is not, as, it's not that great. It's like less than standard definition, I would mm. say. Maybe standard definition, maybe 400, 500 lines. And then the audio quality is not that great as well. With digital TV, you can expect better image quality, better audio quality, and it has a potential to do much more. Mm. You can do interactive services, and there's a possibility of hooking up to the internet to do much more. The move, the change from analog signal to digital signal, right? Uh, why has it taken so long for the government to do this? Um, I guess there are some ding-dongs here and there. Mm. Okay, firstly, we need to get the, the infrastructure ready. Mm. So, uh, I'm, uh, so right now, they already have 44 digital transmission sites throughout mm. the country. So that's up and running. And of course, you need to do a lot of testing as well to make sure that uh, the switchover is as seamless as possible with minimal uh, disruption and interference. So the government, um, early this year, they started doing testing in Langkawi. Mm. And okay, you might want to ask, why do it Langkawi? Mm. So apparently it's because of the proximity. So first proximity of all... Proximity to what? Okay, first of all, it's away from uh, the, the, main, the mainland. Okay. It's a bit isolated. Right. At the same time, it's very close to Thailand. So that's very good to test oh. interference. Oh, yeah. okay. Because okay. in Langkawi, you can actually receive uh, Thailand signals. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So that's a great place to test. So mm. they did a test run, mm. and then after the, they do their testing, they decided to switch it off permanently on the 21st of July. Switch off the analog signal. signal. So that's a complete analog After the off. Langkawi test. Yeah. So, so the Langkawi yeah. test started in when again? I, can, I think they've been doing it for quite a while. Okay. So after that day. test has been completed, the government announced that they're going to like. Cut off. Cold turkey, meaning that digital uh, analog will be switched off completely. In Langkawi lah? Yeah. Okay. On 21st of July. All right. So that went well. Mm. So that's like a test bed. Mm. So after that, uh, I think uh, the Minister of uh, Communications, mm. uh, Wabi Gobing Sin, he mm. said, okay, you know what? Let's do it nationwide. Okay. So it's a three phase uh, transition. So mm. the first one was in the Klang Valley and Southern states. So okay. that covers Malacca, Seremban, and Johor. So that took place on 30th of September. The, of this year? This year. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then the next phase uh, was uh, the northern and east coast. So that also switch, was switched off on the 31st of October. So right now, mm. there's no more analog transmission in West Malaysia. Wow, really? Yeah, so completely switched off. So people who, with that, that those normal antennas, they cannot receive TV signals. Uh, they cannot receive TV signals anymore. La. They will need I think to we see noise, but I think some stations, uh, when I, mean, I tested a week ago, right? Mm. They just show like PSA static image, like, you know, uh, the, like, there's, there's no there's no trust there's no broad, uh, transmission on this channel anymore. Please switch to digital. Oh, yeah. Okay. So when is uh, Sabah and Sarawak getting mm -hmm. uh, digital uh, TV? Switch over. Um, thirtieth yeah. of sorry, thirty first of uh, October. Of this year. This year. So by end of thirty first, so by end of uh, October, uh -huh. we are fully digital. Are, are they on track to to do that? Yeah. Everything is uh, so, so far. Everything's in plan. So the first and second uh, phase were completed as scheduled. And I don't see they're going to delay this any further. Well, I'm surprised that like the transition is so smooth. That's it's very quick. Yeah, I'm, I mean, we've been monitoring conversations online and, and, and news and all that. There's not been like any talks about confusion or whatever, or people not being able to watch TV. Mm, actually, there are. Oh, really? There yeah. Was? Okay. There's some people don't know what's going on. Uh -huh. uh, some people, they think they got the right setup, but it's not. Some people complain they're not getting the right signal. Some, they didn't get... Uh, good image quality. So there are issues at the moment. Okay, so which, I, I guess yeah. I stand corrected. Um, 
people are facing problems with tra the transi uh, transitioning from mm -hmm. analog to digital. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned also there's a lot of, of, of education that still needs, needs to happen yes. with regards to what's happening, right? Correct. So there are problems. So what, what are the problems that? I think the major complaint is not getting good reception. Okay. So there are a lot of factors to it. So one, uh, the first thing is that they must get the right equipment. Mm -hmm. So if you're using the older TVs, which obviously doesn't have digital tuning capabilities, mm -hmm. they need to buy a decoder like this one. So you need to have one of these, and you must have a UHF, uh, sorry, UHF antenna. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> most houses. Okay, I'm lost. What is a UHF antenna? Ultra high frequency. Ultra high frequency antenna. Uh -huh. on the, okay. Yeah. So you need to have that. You need to have that, and the thing is, you can just you can't just hook it up like that. You need to change the direction because obviously <laughs> when you transition from analog to digital, you, the stations have changed. As in the locate the the antenna must point to the nearest. Uh, transmission side. Okay, so let, let me get this straight. Number one, for me to enjoy digital TV, I uh, if my TV does not support digital tuning, uh, tune, digital signals, yep. it, it doesn't support receiving digital signal uh, natively. I need to get this. Yes, a decoder box. So this is a decoder. Yeah. Uh, and this decoder is provided by this company. Uh, there's a lot of uh, vendors, so this is one of it. So okay, so yeah. okay, there's another layer of confusion there again. So mm -hmm. now I can go to Laoya or Digital Mall. Can or, I? Or I can go Lazada. Or I can or go Shopee. online and yeah. I can buy a, a digital decoder. TV decoder. Yes, that's and right. And it's not standard. It's not like an Astro mm -hmm. decoder where or a nope. unified uh, unified TV decoder where it's provided by the company. Yeah, correct. So the individual can go and buy a decoder. Yeah. How would you know whether the decoder is... I guess if it's sold uh, in Malaysia, mm -hmm. it will be able to receive digital signals that are transmitted in Malaysia. Yeah. Okay, my, my, my other question is, okay, I have to buy this yep. if I have an old TV, yep. or buy a new TV that accepts digital signal. That's right. If you want, when, when you want to buy a new TV, just you need to make sure that it supports uh, digital TV tuning. So what you can what you can do is you can check the spec sheet. Uh -huh. They, I think right now they should promote this very uh, openly. Oh is yeah. Or you can just go to the shop and say, hey, does this support digital TV? Yeah, right? you should support DVB T two. Okay. So yeah. the if you're watching this and you want to find out about digital TV, uh, we're gonna drop a lot. Of, Alex is gonna drop a lot of nuggets on tips and and all that. So uh, listen in. Um, so the first one is you need uh, if you if you're going to get digital TV. You need you need a decoder. If you have an old TV. If you have an old TV. Yeah. Or if you're gonna buy a new TV, make sure that your new TV supports DVB-T2. Two. Yes. Uh, standard for digital broadcast. Uh, the easiest way is to, of course, ask the person in store. Uh, they can probably help you. If not, you can just read through the spec sheet. Should, yeah. be, should be able to get that. Uh, so, now back to this, this thing. How yeah. much does it cost? Uh, it ranges between I think fifty bucks to hundred fifty ringgit because what is the why is the okay why is there a discrepancy in price? Okay, first of all, there are different vendors. So okay. I think Malaysia, I think there's Panasonic, there's Green Packet, and there's a couple of other uh, uh, companies that make these things. Okay. Yeah, and also secondly is the capabilities. So the the bare minimum is that it works as a digital TV tuner. So is this is this the basic one? Is this uh, this is slightly more advanced. Okay. Because this one, as you can see, there's UC ports, and you also have a LAN port at the back. So in future. If let's say a um, uh, provider wants to provide like internet-based services like mm. video on demand mm. or some paid TV capabilities in future that requires internet, you can actually connect a LAN port here. Is it like an internet service? That means is it possible to install YouTube in this? I mean, can the can the manufacturer install YouTube in this? Mm, I haven't seen one yet locally, uh -huh. but I think it's possible. But going back to the digital TV uh, capabilities, there are actually. Uh, additional features which can be enabled if there's internet connection. Oh, okay. So that's why it's more expensive. And and for this unit, I was told that this can support two types of digital TV broadcasts. Uh -huh. One is uh, digital TV terrestrial, which I said earlier uses antenna. Okay. Because uh, in some areas uh -huh. which are not covered, they, you can actually hook this up to a satellite dish. Oh. Yeah, that's for like really remote areas. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, the digital TV broadcasting thing, right? So there's yep. a there's a LAN port here, right? Yep. Is it possible to broadcast a digital TV signal through the internet, like how mm -hmm. IPTV is? Is it is it like IPTV? Uh, it's different. Okay, at the, core, at the very core, right? It's uh -huh. still a terrestrial broadcast. Okay, it's yeah. still broadcasting. Yeah. Okay. So the internet is is basically for interactive services. I see. Yeah. So it's not like IPTV. No IPTV just yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. 
to get a digital signal, you a digital uh, broadcasting signal, you need a decoder yep. for old TVs, or you buy a new TV. Yep. Is there anything else that you need? And, oh, you need yeah. the antenna. Okay, antenna, so yes. the antenna needs to be uh, UHF antenna, and it's pointed to the nearest uh, transmission how site. Would, how would I know that? How, uh, mm-hmm. how do I get somebody to do it? Is there like a number I can call or? Mm-hmm. So let's say okay. if I'm like in, I'm okay. I watch this episode yep. and like, okay, I want to go and do digital TV. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna buy a new TV. Now, what do I do next? Okay. Uh-huh. So if you want to do it yourself, mm. DIY style, you mm. can. Okay, if you have an existing UFH antenna, uh, no issues. You just make U- sure you UHF. UHF antenna. UHF. Yeah, uh-huh. ultra high frequency <laughs> antenna. Uh, just make sure it's pointed to the nearest transmission How tower. How do I know that? You can check online. I don't online. even know whether my house has a UHF antenna. I don't think my house mm-hmm. has an antenna at all. Okay, if you don't have, you can go get it. You can get you can get it online or you can contact uh, the electronic shops. They sell those as well. And you must make sure they point to the right direction. So how do you find out? Uh-huh. Is that you can actually go to the My TV website. Okay. They actually show the list of transmission uh, sites on the Google map. So just make sure you point to the right direction. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And ideally, uh, for landed properties, the antenna should be at least two meters from the ground level for optimal reception. Okay. That's yeah. Okay. Pretty standard. Yeah. What about like? Uh, if you already have uh-huh. a UFH antenna, uh, you just need to adjust it over. And another trick I saw, right? Uh-huh. Because um, doing the the media briefing, uh, they brought us to a couple houses mm. in uh, somewhere remote in Cyber Jaya, Putrajaya. Mm. So I saw one house did, which did something pretty brilliant. So she already has an existing Astro dish, which uh-huh. she doesn't use anymore. She terminated Astro. Okay. So what she did was she uh, get an antenna and just hack it on the dish. So and just stick it on the dish. dish, and then pull the, disconnect the cable and plug into the antenna. Because she uses the same uh, cabling, the same cable cable. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but the cable goes to a decoder. Oh, you just take it out from the decoder, plug it straight into the TV, or plug it into this decoder, yeah, lah. Correct. Oh wow. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, so if you you have Astro and you want to stop using Astro, you can probably do that. Mm. Uh, essentially, okay. There's a bit of setting up that that's required yes. for digital TV. If you have an older TV. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, there's another way. Okay, so let's just talk about the setup first. You need to get a decoder. You mm-hmm. can get this uh, very easily, right? Yeah. Uh, online or at a digital shop like yep. um, Digital Mall Sing-Hang or Lazada or whatever, yeah. or a, an electronic store. Yeah. Uh, and then you need to have a UHF antenna, and then you need to make sure that it's pointed in the right direction. Uh, to know where the right direction is, there's a website. Yep. What's the website called? Uh, you can go to my TV. My my TV. Yeah, my TV broadcasting dot my. And then it will tell you where you should point your antenna. Obviously, if you need that done, uh, you can do it yourself, or you can just get somebody to help you out. It's pretty easy. Yeah, and you want to get someone to help you out? Uh. Actually, my TV provides a service as well. They actually have a network of installers to help you out with digital with yeah. digital broadcast. Yeah, so we you can call them up, and then they can arrange someone to do it. It comes with a fee, of course. Okay, so this one, okay, I read, I, I read on Sojourn.com, right? This is provided for free. For uh, those who fall under the B40 groups. Okay. So to every B40 family or like is there like a limited number? Uh, the government has allocated, I think, no mistake, 1.5 million to 2 million decoder box, uh-huh. which they can get for free. So you can actually... Oh, 2 million? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can actually check... This one, this, this unit? Uh, I think it's a simpler unit. Not this exact model, but okay. it's a different like version. A base model. Yeah, the base uh, model. But it's provided by my TV. Yeah. So you okay. can get it for free and you can check uh, whether you're eligible by going to the my TV broadcasting website. So there's a section for you to check whether you're eligible for the free decoder box for oh. B40. Okay, so if mm. your family member or whoever that you know is within the B40 group, uh, you can get a digital decoder for free. Installation as well and everything? Uh, I think it's not included. Yeah, only the decoder okay, box. Okay, so the yeah. decoder is free, you got to figure out how to install. But again, it's probably pretty simple. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing that's interesting for me is that, why, okay, why why do we need to move to, okay, we've already, we've already talked about that, right? So people, but do people still watch TV? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't have an antenna at home. Mm-hmm. It's all plugged in. Yep. Uh, my Astro is on IPTV. My Unify TV is on IPTV. Yep. Um, I don't. I guess maybe we are not the target for market. the general yeah. public. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess yeah. I'm shooting myself in the foot. So uh, the dissemination of information is still important. Uh, and although a lot of people uh, are online mm-hmm. and are on Facebook. Uh, it's just like radio, la, right? Yep. So people still listen, listen to radio, people still watch TV. You want to get your news, 
uh, live announcements, like for example, the budget recently. Yeah. The best platform is to watch it through ter- terrestrial TV. Yeah, and mm. and changing it to digital makes it more accessible to a, a lot more people. Yes, you get better quality as well. Yeah, yeah. and it's easier. It's it's interesting that you mentioned budget. So mm. we have a TV here. Obviously, it's not plugged in into an antenna. But with the uh, with the launch of the digital TV service, we are now able to get terrestrial TV. Yeah, and it's in high quality. Last time we used to do the online stream. Yeah. Yeah. Now we just watch it. Yeah. On the so TV previously, stream. previously without without an antenna and without a digital signal, we had to watch our live news. If we wanted to watch budget or anything uh, important that's on terrestrial TV, we had to stream it through a website. So luckily, the TV is a smart TV, so we just opened the browser. And key mm. in the key we, in the we URL. Use, or Chromecast. Or, or, yeah. Yeah, or we use the Chromecast. But now we can watch uh, like terrestrial TV, and the content is uh, actually not bad. So, uh, what? Why is it important? Is uh, I'm saying that it's more accessible. It's not because okay, now people are watching more TV, but content like sports, for example, yeah. is now more accessible to more people. So, I you can watch like this um, RTM sports in HD. Yeah. yeah. So, and there are now a lot more. Channels yep. on the digital TV uh, platform yep. than it was on uh, just the normal analog, uh, analog broadcast, right? Yep. So RTM now has sports yep. and 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 there's a, few a couple of shopping channels. There's also Bernama News Channel, Al Hidra. Yeah. Yeah. So the benefits of digital is the enablement of content to to more people, uh, uh, higher quality content, better experience of watching TV, and an interactive experience. So I don't think we're going to doubt that there is. No benefit to switching this, obviously, yep. and then the cost is not that much as well. And it's free to view for everyone. No and it's subscription. Free. Yeah. So so yeah, that 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 comes to my other question, right? So you have my TV, which is a brand, and then we have also my free, free view. view TV. So mm-hmm. can you explain what the these two entities are? Okay. The the basically the sexy branding name for the whole digital TV <laughs> experience is called my free view. My TV is basically the enabler. They are like the platform provider, so they don't do content. So they're the one that takes the content and transmits out through the forty-four transmission sites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So my free view is like the initiative, lah. Yeah. The name of the. So this is like okay. This is a my free view experience, yeah, it's a, Because it's a free to air TV service. Ah, yeah. uh, and then the service is provided by my, my TV. TV. Yes. But the box can also be used by, uh, but but anybody else can also make the box. Yeah. It's like TV can buy any brand. You can buy your Samsung. You can buy your Panasonic, Sharp, Sony TVs. Just make sure it fulfills the standard and it's certified by. Uh, Siri. Siri. So you can see here. I think there's an MCMC sticker. Yep. So you can see that right here. You're gonna buy a decoder box. Let's make sure that it's certified by you know Siri and MCMC. Okay. Now, um, so we talked about people who have old TVs, what they need to do, right? Yeah. Now we talk about people who have newer TVs that can support digital broadcast. Yeah. Uh, so what, 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 what we did here and it works. And I don't. So my, for me, the confusion is because oh, why is there such a hassle to Point the antenna in the right direction and everything, right? Because we also plug our TV to a digital antenna, an indoor antenna. Indoor antenna. Um, and got here. and and the signal worked. So yep. it's essentially like a plug and play experience. So why is there this difference? I think I guess it's because of uh, location as well. Because if you are within, I was told by Anip, how far are we from the nearest uh, transmission site? Less than 10 kilometers. Ten kilometers. Okay. So if you're very close to the nearest trans- transmission site, uh-huh. um, the indoor antenna works just fine. But for other pe- places, uh-huh. they might be very far from the nearest site. So that's where you need to have a really uh, a proper strong, s- strong s- setup. Uh, I'm sorry, a, a, a proper antenna setup that can receive the signal. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, there are 42 transmission. 44. 44 transmission towers just in the this side of Malaysia, right? No, the entire nationwide. 44 transmission sites. The reason why I say transmission sites is because we, I'm told that each site there's actually redundancy. There's actually three transmitters. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, if you are within uh, 10 or what 15, I think we less than 20 kilometers radius. Mm. Uh, you just need this, and it's yep. uh, very easy. Uh, very easy actually. Yeah. So all we, and this is very cheap. Yeah. It's like I don't know five ringgit or something. No, it's like, I think about twenty ringgit. You can get it from like Shopee, Shopee Lazada, Lazada, whatever, yeah. whichever that your favorite online seller is, and yeah, all you have to do is plug it in to the TV, to and, the TV and, and just start tuning. And, st- and and the best part of digital TV is that there's an auto tuner. Actually, even a lot of TV yeah, is about, right? Yeah, it's like <laughs> normal fine, program everything. Yeah. Oh, well, well, okay, the other thing I like about digital TV is... Um, the program guide, right? Yes, digital program guide, which mm. is cool. So now you know what's going to be broadcasted. And I like the, I like the quality. Uh, okay, so now, um, 
if you are within a 10 kilometer radius of a digital tra TV transmission tower, to figure out where that is, you just go online, look for digital tower transmission, my free, my, my digital TV, Malaysia, whatever. We'll drop a link below. Yeah, yeah. okay, we'll drop a link in the description. Uh, all you need to do is just get this and plug it into your TV and you're set. Yeah. Um, and I was surprised at how easy it was to get digital TV on, on a smart TV that's uh, compatible with this. So I think this is pretty cool. Um, now, is there anything else we want to talk about with regards to digital TV? Uh, quality. Uh, one okay. thing that my TV uh, is proud of is that the digital TV transmission quality is pretty good. And they told me that they, they say that it's better than <coughs> other satellite providers. <laughs> because of the compression technology they use. Actually, I would have to agree with that. Mm. I think, um, okay, like, we'll be honest. Uh, Astro's, Astro, uh, normal definition uh, quality is terrible, to be mm. honest. The HD is okay. La, but if you get the chance to experience digital TV, mm. right, you will see that the quality is so much better. It's 1080i. Okay, so that's yeah. that's full HD already, lah. Yeah. And then and then what what else is uh, what else is cool about digital? And thing? another thing is that well, let's say you're watching sports, right? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that if you're gonna put this side by side, you're gonna see the goal uh, being scored early on digital TV because you know there's less latency compared to satellite. I see. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about all those stuff, right? Now uh, I wanna know. Okay, the the problem that people are facing. Uh, one of the major comments you mentioned is that people are seeing a watermark on the digital TV broadcast. Yeah. On the and, screen. and you're telling me there's a reason for that, right? Yeah. Okay, so what's what's the reason? Okay, tell me the whole story. La. Okay, so okay. a lot of people complain, hey, what's up with just TV? There's a watermark there. Do I need to pay money to remove the watermark? What does the watermark look like? So so it looks so basically it's like a like a semi-transparent uh, logo of my free sorry uh, uh, my free view uh -huh. on the screen on the top all the screen, time. All the time. Okay. So I asked my TV about this mm -hmm. and they said that is the, uh, the watermark is there for troubleshooting purposes. Mm -hmm. So imagine this, if let's say a customer has a digital TV at home mm -hmm. and everything is tuned up properly. Mm -hmm. So if the person couldn't get a proper reception, they might call up my TV and say, hey, mm -hmm. why is the is the digital TV down? Why am I not getting mm -hmm. good reception? So the first question they ask is, are you sure you're, are you, you're watching on a digital TV channel? Because you can have a mixture of analog and digital ah. during the transition period. So to find out if you're really <laughs> watching digital TV, is to look up for the watermark. Okay, yeah. I get it, I get it. So it's quite, it's because it's quite difficult to say, oh yeah, my signal is good, I can watch TV, but I cannot yeah. watch this channel. Yeah. Because in the end, it's actually, oh, you're watching the analog signal. Yeah, it could be. Oh. Yeah, so that's how you can differentiate. And this watermark but will isn't be isn't there like a better way to do it? I think maybe you can make it smaller, I'm not too sure. But I guess they need to make it more prominent because people might be watching it from the old CRT TV. <laughs> True. Yeah. So they have to cover for a lot of uh, eventuality, la. That's right. And you're saying that this this will be removed? Yeah, this will be removed once everything is switched off. Oh, so this is now for like this transition phase where it's like for troubleshooting and everything. Yeah, correct. Just to sort this out, la. That's right. Okay, 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 okay. And then and then um, you also mentioned that now it's because because of this technology, right? It's going to be like so much easier for people to create their own TV station. Okay, how yeah. does this whole broad digital broadcast? This ecosystem work from okay. end to end. All right, so let's talk about analog first. Last mm. time people say analog uh, transmission, right? Mm. Uh, uh, for example, RTM. RTM, you need to build their own uh, transmission towers. First, they need to get a license. License, yes. Okay, once the license is done, they have to build their own infra. Infrastructure. Okay, they have to build their own TV station, yeah. videos, and everything. And then their and own then towers. They have to yeah. Transmit themselves. Correct. This is analog. Yep. Okay. Remember last time TV3, when Media Premium first started, TV3 wasn't in, uh, available nationwide. It's only available in certain states, maybe urban areas. Like back in Sarawak, right? Um, this particular town, Bintulu, mm. didn't have TV3 mm -hmm. for the longest time. Okay, so the challenges are the same, la, meaning that okay, where the source is, mm -hmm. if it's close by, you can just transmit directly. Yeah. If it's far away, you have to relay that, that broadcast. Yeah, it's going to be very messy. Imagine every single TV station mm. building their own towers. Ah. Yeah, so that's the old days with analog. Okay. So with digital TV, to make it more efficient and make it more uh, standardized, uh, my TV uh -huh. is given the responsibility to set up the infrastructure. What so do you mean by infrastructure? The transmission sites. Mm. So basically, as a TV content, uh, let's say if you're going to do your own TV station. Let's say if we were going to do a Soji Jaw TV. Yep. Okay. So first we need, need to, first we need to get a license from MCMC, mm -hmm. and of course, obviously we need to create the content mm -hmm. and. Right now, instead of put, uh, setting up our own uh, transmission sites, we can talk to my TV, and they will do the broadcast for us. So we just provide the content to them, yep. and then they will create a channel for us? Yeah, and then they will broadcast. 
oh, through wow. the transmitter. So that's okay. how it's possible. So the the other benefit of this is it kind of like libera- liberalizes the content creation yep. for people to broadcast things faster. Obviously, you can do it on YouTube, mm-hmm. but you know, there's there's a reason why. Um, but broadcast is still here because yep. the dissemination is is wider. Yeah, like for example, Bernama TV. You don't mm. you didn't have that during analog days. Oh, so there's no channel for Bernama during an, during analog days. Yeah. Okay. So now you have it on digital TV. Yeah, for me it's like it's difficult. I don't have the context because I've been watching Astro, so yeah. I don't know what I'm missing out. I'm, on. I'm no, what, I don't know what other people are missing out. Yeah. I know it sounds. It sounds bad to say that. Uh, this is different, you know, different segments yeah, in Malaysia. It, I guess for me, the this kind of like opens up my eyes to say, hey, uh, a lot of people who are able to watch TV are missing a lot of content, and and that's why uh, mobile phones and social media networks are filling in the gap. The problem with that is the gap is being filled by sometimes crap. You know, mm-hmm. people are just creating content and they are creating content that might be fake or could be wrong. Mm-hmm. So having a digital broadcast TV, a digital uh, broadcast uh, system allows for this. So I'm, I'm talking about for, I'm talking about this from a, like a sociology standpoint. So having an anchor, an anchor means like having the like the point where people say okay this is the this is the basis right having an anchor allows us to have discussions uh, left and right of that anchor so whether you agree or you do not agree on a topic but you always come back to the to that anchor as a reference in the UK for example is the BBC so yeah. even if you agree with Boris Johnson or you don't agree with Boris Johnson you come back to the BBC to say okay this is a topic that's been discussed I agree or do not uh, agree with it not having that anchor will allow a discourse that's like the United States, where peop- where nothing is real, where there's uh, Fox and CNN that yeah. are divide, that are already on their different sides as liberals and cons- conservative party, and there's no middle ground. So you so you don't know what is real and what is fake, and it's very easy to get confused when yeah. you're talking to millions. Yeah. Uh, so I'm coming back to this because what I can see in the future is the intent of having a digital broadcast allows you to have this anchor because everybody can watch the same material and everybody can agree or disagree on the same material and not a different variation of the material. And that hopefully will pan out and allow us to have a better society, a better political climate. Obviously, you know, at the end of the day, this is what we want to talk about because technology is not just mobile phones and digital TV, higher definition or allowing us to interact with people. It's about changing lives and making lives better. And digital broadcast is like a door to allow that to happen. Uh, t- now we have more uh, TV stations. More people can make more TV stations. We just need licenses. Uh, that means you can present different views of the same topic. Uh, and it also is going to pave the way for better mobile connectivity in the future. So Alex, uh, what I want to get back to is you mentioned that Having digital broadcast is important for 5G. Yep. What is the relationship? Okay, so anything when it comes to wireless, uh, mobile phones, um, even uh, TV, radio, and satellite transmission, it all takes up spectrum. Spectrum mm. is like a, like a space in the air mm. for transmission, mm. and this is heavily regulated. So as consumers, uh, as more Malaysians rely on mobile connectivity, there's only a finite spectrum available for mobile, uh, for mobile uh, communications. Mm and we need to use more. And analog TV is a very inefficient way of using spectrum because the spectrum you need to use for one analog TV station, you can actually transmit like more than 10 channels in digital format. Oh wow. Yeah, 10 or 15. So one analog channel. So one analog channel requires a slot in the spectrum. Yeah. So essentially you can put in 10 different channels. Digital, if you choose digital. 10 digital channels. Yeah. Wow. So it's more efficient. Uh-huh. So imagine we have uh, how many TV stations we have right now? Analog. We have uh, TV one, TV two, TV three, seven, eight, nine. There's six analog TV mm. stations. Mm. So imagine the space that's used by these six stations, right? You can fit like channel. sixty or sixty to eighty channels wow. in digital format. So with this new um, conversion, right, mm. we'll be able to free up the seven hundred mega spectrum, which can be reused mm. for four G and five G. But they have not yet finalized on whether they're going to use. 
700 for 5G, right? Yeah, not yet. They so have not. Okay, so 5G spectrum allocation is another ballpark altogether. That's probably in another LTE uh, uh, show. Yep. If you want to know more about 5G, uh, if you have any questions or suggestions about uh, 5G show, uh, let us know. Maybe we'll come up with a 5G show. Uh, but it's yeah, digital TV broadcast opens up that possibility. Yeah. Uh, it frees at that hundred, at that seven hundred megahertz spectrum. Yeah. That seven hundred megahertz spectrum then can be either utilized for four G or five G. And then we can take a four G spectrum and then use it for five G. Possibly. Right? Yeah. Okay. To, to give one example, uh, mm. because uh, UTM they actually uh, had a what's top UTM? Uh, oh, university okay. technology. So uh -huh. basically, they 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 had uh, like a like a workshop of sorts about spectrum and then what they shared was that if you use 700 megahertz spectrum right mm. you can get 12 times wider coverage compared to 1800 megahertz because it's a lower band mm. so it, that's actually better for wider coverage oh okay so yeah. it allows for better I mean, more people can access the internet lah, yeah by the way, and it, it penetrates the world better as well yeah that's very yeah. good that's very good okay so i guess at the end of the day um why we're talking about this is number one um, there's a lot of confusion so i hope the show is able to like kind of like alleviate the confusion uh digital tv is not available uh in this side of malaysia uh for sabah and sarawak it will be by the end of october i uh, just clarify it's really available just that they haven't shut the analog yet oh okay yeah so digital okay let me correct yeah. myself uh sorry for the wrong information digital tv is not available nationwide yeah there is no analog signal anymore in Peninsular Malaysia. Yep. Sabah and Sarawak will go full digital at the end of October. Do you need to pay for digital TV? No. No. To access the content is free. But to be, uh, to be able to receive the content, you might need to invest in a decoder, uh, in a new antenna, and just set it up nicely. And if the cable is uh, in bad condition, you might need to change that as well. Might as well just change everything. Lah. If you yeah. want to change the quarter, don't reuse the cable, just change. Okay? <laughs> it doesn't cost that much. Yeah. Okay, so that's one. Um, the other confusion is, okay, if, if you have a new TV, what do you need? You need, you need just to get a digital antenna. If, if, if you are within the 10, within, if you're, okay, you need to get a digital TV antenna. It's the UHF uh, antenna. Uh, and if you are within 10 or 12 kilometer radius of a transmission tower, you should be able to just get an indoor antenna like we just showed you just now. Mm. It costs about 20, 15 ringgit. No need to install UHF or whatever. But if you are outside of that coverage, it's recommended to get a UHF antenna. Yeah, and it's at least two meters high from the ground. And a lot of people don't know also, if you go to the uh, MITE website, they have installation services as well. Yeah. So you can get that done there. Uh, with regards to the rock, uh, decoder, you, you can get a My TV decoder or you can get other compatible decoder that supports DVB, B. DVB yeah, T2. T2. Yeah. Um, Zachary will put the letters here. DVB T2. And make sure it's uh, certified by Serum certified M by Serum. MC. MC. Mm. Okay. And then that's, that's everything you need to know about like getting a digital signal. Now, the question is we talked about uh, just now is why is it important? It's important because of three things. Number one is this, the accessibility of content. So content will now be more accessible to more people across a larger area. Number two is the creation of content. This enables, so because, of, uh, because of that technology that allows the one spectrum that requires one channel in analog, now will take up, uh, now can support, can more support 10, at least mm. 10, or up to 10 channels. Mm -hmm it means that we can create more channels. And, and private companies or content creators can create more channels to just have a better discussion, whether it's going to be about politics or technology or about food or about cats, whatever. It allows that people can now be more educated and that's very important for our society. So the intent while on the surface looks rudimentary, not rudimentary, looks very basic. Oh, mm -hmm. changing from analog to digital TV, yay, uh, yeah. what does it mean to me? Well, you know, I think the re we started out this show to explain what digital TV is. Yeah. I guess the realisation is it's important to have this because of its contribution to the society. Yeah. The number three thing uh, in terms of the benefit is, of course, this allows us to then move into the 5G 5G area. Yeah. Um, uh, again, 5G is something that we need another show to talk about, but on the surface of it, 
uh, if the allocation, if the spectrum has been allocated, um, we can now we can we have options. We can take away the seven hundred, put it in either four G, take another, another take an eighteen hundred or twenty four hundred to for 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 five G, yeah. or just use seven hundred for five G. Yeah. Now we have that option. In 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 any case, um, it's just a major change, uh, and we're now re really truly going into the digital era. Okay, so Alex has written a number of articles about my TV and digital TV in Malaysia. You can read all of them on uh, soichinchow.com. Uh, just go to soichinchow.com and just search for digital TV or my TV. Uh, on our Soichinchow Bahasa Melayu site, we also have our resident geek, uh, Anip. Anip, you wrote about uh, how to... So Google My TV search in Chow, mesti keluar, mesti keluar. So kalau nak tahu macam mana nak pasang, uh, or adjust uh, tips and tricks on digital TV in bahasa Melayu, you can go to bm.searchinchow.com and search for My TV. My, my TV. Okay. Alright. Uh, I think I'm done. Is there anything else you wanna say to wrap up the show? Mm, I think overall, moving to digital TV is, is a good thing for Malaysia. Not just we get better quality, but also frees up more space for uh, 4G and 5G. And yeah, and like you said, uh, content providers can actually uh, jump onto TV broadcasting easier than yeah. before. So hopefully uh, one day we will have uh, social TV on the actual, actual TV. TV. <laughs> That's not like YouTube or whatever. Yeah. In any case, guys, uh, we're done for the show today. Obviously, I hope that it's been useful and informative for you guys. Um, comments, feedback, suggestions, we love that. Please put them in the comment section below. We want to know what you think and we want your ideas so that we can make this show better. We love talking about topics in uh, LTA. Uh, if you need more, uh, you want to know more, you want us to cover a topic that you are interested in, just let us know. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy the content. Uh, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. And uh, this is Amin. This is Alex. And that's it. That's about it from uh, Let's Talk. Catch you guys later. Bye.